Where are we today, Phil? Mount Batten Tower. House Sturt, as it was called in the Civil War days. A peninsula of land poking out into Plymouth, towards Plymouth. A threat, but it wasn't a threat. Over to my left stood Fort Stamford. In 1643, November, it was captured by the Royalists. The survivors fled down towards this area, were ferried back across Plymouth. The Royalists came up and set lookouts, but they did not bring cannon up here. The reason, if you look around, it, the, Roy, the, Roy, the defences of Plymouth, the roundhead defences, we had cannon all along Cat Down. We've got Plymouth Fort to the left, full of cannon, and we've got the blockhouses, and we had the Navy, naval ships. So if the, round, if the Royalists have brought cannon up here, number one, they, how could they have gone up this great big steep hill? And if they did, they'd be vulnerable to attack, because our troops were concentrated in and around the town. They could come across any point and cut them off, cut off this causeway, and capture the cannons. So the Royalists didn't really u utilize Mount Batten Tower very much, or the area. Mount Batten Tower wasn't there in the Civil War. That was built in the 1660s um, when they started work on the Citadel by Bernard de Gom. Because if they the had, Royalist it would engineer. have been a good vantage point, wouldn't it? As as a lookout, right? Because you couldn't get a lot of soldiers up here. Um, the Royalists didn't have a lot of soldiers in this area. After the fall of Fort Stamford, the South Hams and Plymstock area went quiet. Most of the fighting around Plymouth was to the north of the city. Um, so all troops, there were the only few troops that were here after the major armies left this area, uh, Hopton, King Charles, Prince Morris, after and Grenville, when they all moved away from Plymouth, they left blockading forces around the city. Most of these were concentrated around Plimpton with outworks at Crown Hill, St. Pudo, Wydie, all those areas. Um, here, there was nothing here. There was a few Royalist garrisons around Radford and Plimstock Church, but they were insignificant numbers, maybe a couple of hundred men. So this was after the fall of Fort Stamford, this area went out of importance for the defenders. What would have been the scene out to sea? Would there be fishing boats there? Because uh, we must have lived on a lot of fish, I'd have, I'd have thought. We had the Navy. Right. We, the Parliament controlled the Navy throughout the Civil War. The and vast majority of the ships. In at the time? Sutton Harbour. Until Fort Stamford fell and the Royalists occupied this area. And then we moved into Mill Bay because they could actually fire on the ships from around the here, uh, this side of the water. They would fire on the ships and there was a ship reported it sunk in the cat water during the Civil War. And they found the skeleton of that ship. Um, Mill Bay was our other harbour because we controlled Drake's Island, or St Nicholas's Island as it was known. By controlling the island we controlled the harbour and the seaward front uh, approaches so even if the Royalists had a navy they would have been hard put to come into Plymouth. But we never were short of supplies. We had our water supply, the leak came into Plymouth, we had wells. When the leak was cut by the Royalists, as it was many times during the Civil War, we were brought fresh water in by ships and troops and supplies, ammunition. We had to pay for it. Um, so we were never in a, pro a shortage of, of anything really. So you said we had to pay for it. Who would have brought it in then? Were there entrepreneurs at the time? No, Parliament. House of Parliament, they, the House of Commons, they organised all that. They sent in what happened to get money for defence for the defences of Plymouth. The estates of Royalists were, were were confiscated and sold off, and the money used to buy supplies and ships for Plymouth and other towns. So, thank you very much, Phil. You're welcome. Thank you.